I am tired, man. It's like nearly midnight for me. It's, how, what is it, Dan? Just it's twenty to nine in the morning for you. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. Yep. So nice. So you just got up. I'm about to go to bed. I'm in Southeast Asia. I'm in Bangkok this morning. I'm heading to Cambodia tomorrow afternoon. So um, I'm right in the middle of all of these countries, John, which is very interesting, isn't it? I'm in going from Thailand, Cambodia into Vietnam. Um, carefully looking at the economies of what's going on here and mm. i'm a little bit um not shocked but like gobs or smack like gobsmacked let me tell you about bangkok so i've never been to Please. thailand before and uh, i came here and i did a little bit of a couple of days off had some r and r but i've come back to bangkok the capital and first of all it's enormous I had to go and do some work. I had some appointments in the medical district today. There's one huge university, the um, medical research facilities in Southeast Asia, a lot more open to looking at potential other um, aspects of treating and curing disease rather than just putting a Band-Aid on it and saying it's going to come back. But for now, take an aspirin and call me in the morning. So to go... Uh, 12 miles it took me an hour and 20 minutes and that's not at rush hour traffic that's how big this place is okay but here's the interesting thing john there's a couple of points here when we're talking about these potential countries that often people in the west dismiss as being third world countries i've never been here before but i can tell you this mate it isn't bangkok is spotlessly clean that was the biggest surprise I was like, oh, my God, there's no trash or rubbish or cigarette butts anywhere. And I've been in three different taxi rides now. And I'm talking all the way, different sides of the city, all, all different parts. It's not just the nice tourist hotel neighborhoods that I've been in. I was in all sorts. Spotlessly clean, John. I was surprised at that. And the quality of food and the restaurant service that you've got, I mean, we've all eaten Thai food before, and I've, you know, I had some Thai food here, but you can't eat it every day if you're not from Thailand. So I've been eating Western style food, super, super high quality. Um, vehicles from Japan, like Toyotas, Mitsubishi, Hyundai, and I don't think I think they're Korean, maybe. Vehicles we don't even see in Europe, and certainly in, in the USA as well. Really nice four by four SUVs. They don't even sell them because this is right hand drive. They're all made in Japan sent to thailand and, and asia which is right next door so anybody that's out there saying oh you know what thailand third world country it isn't you know the internet's good the uh the service is great the quality of food is exceptionally high i went i've seen all the medical facilities today if you had an accident or you're doing some sort of treatment because i was in the medical district i was shocked at how high the, the facilities are the standards are and how many people they have in training because we know in the west in the usa for example and in europe we don't have enough nurses because we know how many people are going to be elderly in another 15 20 25 years is is a hell of a lot of people that are going to be in those 70s and 80s age group but they're already training their um nurses here john so when when this does hit I'm going to go and investigate the other two countries that we've talked about, Cambodia and Vietnam specifically. But mm. I'll tell you what, Thailand, what a place, what a place. Not so good on the tourist islands because that's just tourists. It's full of tourism. But in the capital, I am extremely impressed of the high quality of lifestyle. Um, the only bad thing, I would, the only negative I would say would be traffic. I mean, oh, and here's the other strange thing, John. I have seen a single chemtrail since i've been here mm. and bangkok airport is one of the most confusing biggest airport i mean makes jfk nah lax forget it it looks like a greyhound bus station bangkok airport all over the place in thailand i haven't seen a single chemtrail they're not chemtrailing asia they're not chemtrailing wow. thailand which is bizarre because when they're telling us that it's nothing but uh fuel vapor we know that's bullshit, and I can see it's bullshit because I haven't seen any in, in seven days here. And even inside a large city like Bangkok, my lungs, I'm, I'm hitting the gym in the morning. I'm doing some running around, and um, I don't feel the air quality is as bad as uh, people as the Western uh, press is portraying. 
So I'll know a little bit more tomorrow and I hit another country tomorrow. And then I've, my visa hasn't come through for Vietnam yet. So fingers crossed it'll be here, but I'm sure I'll get there. So that's my update, buddy. Nice. <laughs> Thank, thanks for sharing, mate, as always. <laughs> very articulate. You know, it's funny, David. Um, speaking of Thailand, since you're presently there, um, I, a couple of little interesting tidbits to add to what you said. Um, I, I recently, a couple of weeks ago, so, you know, being in the music business, there's a, a big convention, music convention show that they do every year. It's called the NAM. Uh, oh, yeah, National yeah. Association of Music Merchants. So yeah. it's the world's largest trade show. All the big companies come out. The first observation I had is when I was parking in the garage, the parking attendant and I were just talking. And I said, uh, how's your anticipated attendance? He goes, uh, about 52,000 this year. And I'm like, typically in the past before the pandemic, it was 150 to 200,000. So that's a 60 to 75% drop in attendance. A lot of the companies that I deal with and have that's endorsed for years were not there. Just had no foot presence, no booth, no nothing. So that was, you know, kind of an eye opener. And then uh, the hotel that we uh, went to have lunch at, my friend and I, uh, we were talking and the, uh, the waitress that we're talking to was from Thailand and her husband's an importer exporter. So we're talking about the uh -huh. convention and how he frequents there when his, you know, these uh, events come into the, uh, to the trade shows and so forth, but what he does, textiles and the like. And I said to her, I kind of floated by, right? She goes, yeah. I said, do you go back often? She goes, yeah, I go back <laughs> six, eight times a year, so basically every other month. And I said, my understanding is the Thai bot, your currency. She goes, yeah, that's right. I said, my understanding is it's going to do quite well next year. And sometimes some I, I kind of like dumb, like, you know, some type of revaluation. She goes, yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to thrive next year. We're, we're anticipating it. So it corroborates really nicely with what you're sharing out there. So there, you know, the people in the business world, not all of them, but some of them know what's, what's coming. So I thought it was kind of an interesting footnote to what you were sharing. I've got Thai bot here. Look, this Thai bot. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting. And also, also John, um, you know, okay, so the USA, when you're purchasing a vehicle in the USA, everybody has a lease. But we don't have the same sort of financial facilities um, in Europe. You can do it on a lease, but not a, not a lot. It's hard to get car leasing. We don't have the same easy financing business. I'm just putting all my Thai bar away because like 19 different variations. Um so looking around there today, and the cars in, in, in the USA are artificially priced low because they're a consumer market. They want people to get a new car every three years. In Asia, they have slightly different rules. You know, the cars are very expensive. They're about double, probably close to triple. Like let's say just say a Toyota 4Runner, what you'd pay 28, 35,000, something like that. And that's only a guess. It would be double that here. And all over all over Bangkok, there's vehicles and brands I've never heard of because they're all coming in from China and different different manufacturers in Asia. So they're keeping it an Asian market for Asian people. But I got in taxis today that were brand new, all mood lighting in the back, and I couldn't tell if it was electric or if it was gasoline. You know, it was moving and playing and buttons, and you know, you got charges everywhere. They're so far advanced, and they're obviously geared up for. This new surge, I noticed there's a lot of BMW. Like, who's going to drive a, a a BMW convertible around a hot city like this? Where you know, after half an hour with the top down, you just be sunburned the hell. You just get fried. But there they are in the showrooms. I've seen Rolls Royces, BMWs. I've seen all the high end stuff. And imagine the three times the price of what you'd pay in the USA. There they are in the showrooms. People are still buying them. So again, this. Getting ready for a revaluation. I tell you what, keep your eyes on Thailand because whatever they're doing, keep on doing it. The manufacturing uh, industries are obviously going to see a lot of industrial stuff here. But the, there's no homeless. I haven't seen any homeless, John. None. You really? see people looking a bit scruffy. No homeless. I didn't see them unless they're all in a different section and I didn't hit them. I haven't seen any. I'm sure there are. There always are in cities. But there's no trash, there's no garbage, there's no cigarette butts, there's no beer cans, there's no Pepsi containers. It's just, you know, in most cities you see people rummage, like Brazil, for example, there's always guys rummaging around taking aluminum, 
which is aluminium in real English, <laughs> aluminum, cans, and then recycling them. I didn't see any of that today. I haven't seen any of these people. I don't know where they are. If it's just me, lucky, unlucky, however you say it. But I'm excited to see the rest because if Thailand is anything to lead by this future when they do revaluate the currency holy shit is it going to be strong because they're they're literally ready for it they're ready for it i can see it super yeah. fascinating well you're there so yeah 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 and a lot of people don't see these things. you know that my understanding is singapore is sort of so singapore yeah i've been invited Sorry, i've been invited to singapore on the way back i don't think i'm gonna have time i've got to get back to london um, I'm going to be flying, hopefully, out of uh, Vietnam all the way back to London. But I have been invited to Singapore. Singapore is a different, a different cat of fish, really, because it's such a tiny place. But they've based all of their industry on the banking industry, John. And here's where it gets mm -hmm. dangerous for Singapore is because most of their industry is based on oil. And they do it all in dollars. Because the Singapore dollar is also um, fixed against the U.S. dollar. And well, you know what's going on with the U.S. dollar at the moment, how many people are declining. Um, the countries are saying no more petrodollar. We've got to come into Basel III compliance. But you know what? I've been raffling, rabbling on now for about 15 minutes or so, John. So I know that your intel is a lot better than mine. I'm only boots on the ground. But your larger scan picture of what's going on in the currency world and, not, and what's coming in the future, let's have a little chat about that. Sure. Well, I, I think you're, I think you're being modest to say that <laughs> that's just good, just good back and forth, uh, you know, discussion on on that happenings in the world. Um, well, no, there's a couple of interesting things I wanted to share with you on your show and, and break it with you, which I thought was fascinating. So, uh, we'll start with uh, my point about Singapore was just going to be that my understanding of people who travel there tell me it's a really clean city. Then, oh yeah. You, spit or litter i think you go to you, they imprison you for that it's my understanding yep. no chewing gum you're not allowed oh. chewing gum there either okay okay so good to know i i think that that uh pay to play oil with the u.s is going to end though for singapore as it decouples around the world like we were talking about so at some point that's going to unwind but anyway um some really interesting information that i've come across i'm going to put this on my wrap up tomorrow but i'm going to break it with you first uh in your your uh really well-studied and well-heeled audience. So one of my uh, team members, they all have great information we've discussed before, but one team member came to me in particular and he told me a couple weeks ago, which you now know is the case and it's already been broken, which is to say that we broke the story a couple weeks ago with, in conjunction with a few others that uh, the BRICS nation has overtaken the G7 for the controlling interest of the world's GDP up 35%. But we also have 30 to 40 nations waiting in the wings this week it was announced, and I put it on my Telegram channel, that Serbia is one of the nations in, in consideration. Huh. And one of the ones we're watching, Zimbabwe. I still yeah. think that's going to be the, the, the kingpin of everything that can pretty much carry BRICS all by itself, as we've well discussed. But a little interesting geopolitical information. So my contact, my relationship that gave me that bit of information a couple weeks ago dropped something on me earlier this Monday, and I've been kind of you know processing it. He said there's a high degree of probability that President Trump's running mate has been picked. And I've told you this offline. Well, you so mean I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say running mate. You mean who's going to be um, his vice president? His VP. Yeah. Correct. I was going to say that's what we yeah. discussed offline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Trying to and, catch me. And it's a surprise. It's, it's, <laughs> it's always a surprise, just like in sports when people try to. You know, fans try to draft pick and say, oh, my team should pick this person, that person. It's usually the sometimes it's the person, but I'll, oftentimes it's the opposite of what people anticipate their team to pick. Yeah. So this is this is another wild card. And what he's told me is this is going to shock some people. It certainly surprised me. High degree surprised of me. probability yeah. that high degree of probability that the next VP for President Trump will be Sarah Palin. And they, yeah. They've, they've hidden her for a reason. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right, John. Because my first reaction, this is only for the sake of the audience. For the sake of the audience, I always like to say that. For the sake of the audience, we discussed this last <laughs> night because we had a little briefing and we said, okay, 
I was like, Sarah Palin. I was like, holy shit, where's she been? Where's she been? She was like the, the Alaskan um, governor, right? But really great, um, great person I, I really like. And I was like, okay, I can see that working. So that'll be interesting if they, um, if they announce that. Mm-hmm. So we're going we're gonna to find out at some point. And here's another interesting little thing for you, mate, is uh, President Trump was interviewed Sunday on Fox with Maria Bartiromo, as I'm sure you saw. And uh, she was very short with him. Uh, because they go way back and she's trying to get fast quick information and she said uh what what struck me is that she said to him so are you bringing back fed chair jay powell he said no and she said why and he said because he missed it among other things we know he's a yes man and he's being set up by the cabal to do his marching orders for the deep state and they're gonna you know i was a little surprised at first that they didn't do a rate cut a week ago then I, I interviewed this week with um, Greg Manorino on Monday and Bill Holter yesterday. Who these guys are like top level financial, you know, aficionados in this world, and they weren't particularly surprised because Greg is calling for the first rate cut somewhere between April and June. They're going to do it sequentially. They think they're going to try to keep this artificial economy as float as, as long as they can for the elections, but they're going to find out that there are moves and counter moves. So back to President Trump. When she asked him, okay, well, who would you pick to supplant Jay Powell? He said, well, I have two candidates in mind and I'm not gonna tell you who they are yet. And, and I don't, this is just my own speculation. I don't know this to be the case. So I don't want people to hang on this as fact, but I will tell you what was interesting is the first thought that came to my mind, it was almost like a very still small voice. Yeah. Judy Shelton. Oh yeah. Judy Shelton, because she wants to bring back the gold standard and audit the Fed. And we know Q said, Gold will destroy the Fed and we will audit the Fed. And what's interesting yeah. to note about this, David, is that in the end of Trump's first term, he put out Judy Shelton, many people forget, to kind of test the waters of Congress and, and uh, the House and the Senate to see how she might fare with that notion. And she only lost by, I think, three or four percentage points. It was pretty divided, of course. We know the word says a divided House cannot stand. So that was a litmus test to see how they would react with a corrupt government. Now, with him getting the whole deck cleared and the cards in his favor for we the people, I think there's a very good chance that she is picked for that position. Well, she'd be good in it because A, she's trustworthy and B, she's, well, there's about 15 different reasons, but she's smart and she's trustworthy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, John, you've got to believe that these people need to be patriots because they're not doing it for the sake of lining their own pockets and, and looking after their friends down the country club that can go sailing in the Caribbean all winter. It's because they care about the people that they belong to. They're, they're patriots. And this, this whole philosophy of Trump saying, make America great again, is exactly what he needs to do. Bring back the manufacturing, bring back the respect, and stop farming out all of the, um, the business to overseas companies that are undermining American jobs. And it stabilizes the economy. Now, there was a great video that you sent about, um, what was it now? Let me go back <laughs> a second ago. So and great, I, you remembered it. <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking there's a, there's another interesting one. Um, you you sent it to me the other day. I'm going to go look for it now because I literally had it and then something else popped in my head and, and then I've lost it again. That happens to me because it's um, I've got 15 things going on. Oh, you know what? I've just actually, um, it was the, uh, the Vietnamese thing because um, how they're progressing through it now and everybody's joining the bricks and pushing out this, this new, um, this idea, this old idea and embracing the new idea. And Vietnam is, is mm -hmm. a country that I'm exceptionally excited to see because I see the potential of what's going on in Thailand. But when we get into the Vietnam um, situation, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Unfortunately, I applied for my visa a couple of days late because they've gone into a 14-day period of um, national holiday they do every year. I think it's, I want to say New Year, but it's not New Year, it's something else. Um, I read about saying it might be slow. But again, when we're listening to all this Western media, oh, I know what it was, John. It was Basel 3 compliance when they're putting those commercials on the TV. That's what it was. I was mm -hmm. just looking it up here on your site because I think, I think that's a great video. Let me see. Have you got it easy to find? Do you want me to look for it? 
Can you look for it? Because I, be honest, we have so much information here. I would, take, <laughs> I would, I would hold us up, but while I'll do this, David, while you're looking yeah. for it and we'll yeah. multitask because we know each other. Why don't sure. you share the intel that you asked me about before on the currency while you're doing that? So yeah, I'll, go, I'll go, 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 go. Absolutely. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take accountability folks. I mean, you're, you're seeing this video whenever you're seeing it, but for David's sake, I, I held them up a little bit this morning because I asked them to give me time to get the latest information. So I'll take the onus on that for the late hour, but I think it'll be worth your while when you see what we have. So it's interesting today, David, um, Jeanette Planchard, she is, if you don't remember, uh, I know you're very good at geopolitical affairs and knowing the ins and outs and the workings of things. She is the UN representative to the Middle East for Iraq relations. So oh, yeah. she's tasked basically with monitoring Iraq, all the comings and goings, all the notifications. Well, today they've announced, and I put this on our Telegram as well, so people want to see all the articles and all the subtext, they can go to our Telegram group and see all that. It's too much to list today. But basically, she two key things happen. She has announced that the uh, Chapter 7 is getting ready to be lifted off of Iraq, which is huge. Second yeah. thing is people always yeah. want to know the, the pedantic, repetitive question, when, 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 and how much. Well, how we're much, not, yeah. we don't do that here. We don't do that here. But what we will do is help you to think for yourself and put the pieces together so you can draw your own conclusions. And it's not opinion based. It's not emotion based. Right. It's fact based. That's fact what we based. do. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, the chapter seven, she has now been announced that the end of her term, this came from within the UN. Her term ends this May. I don't know the exact date. I think it's mid May. Doesn't really matter. It's three months. Right. We established on our last show, I believe. And we talked about this, we did some deep dives and we established that the fiscal year for the U fiscal year financially for the US and the whole of Europe, as you can attest to, is October 1st, right? Yeah. The Middle East and Kuwait and that general region, it's April 1st. So if you start putting pieces together, they're telling you that their new fiscal year, fiscal year, where they're going to end the currency auctions, they're going to end the black market, is April 1st, is the back wall. Then Janine is now being. Uh, told and is telling us that in May, she steps down. Why do I bring her up? Well, two reasons, to identify her position and its importance. And two, is she deep state and cabal? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But does, God turn does God turn evil for good? All the time. Genesis 50, 20. What you meant for harm, God will turn for good for the saving of all souls. That was in re reference to Joseph and what he dealt with in the Old Testament. But it's still prevalent today. God is old hat at taking bad and transforming it to good. That's what we're seeing take place very systematically. So, so you put those pieces together, she ends up in May. What she has told people, you know, within private circles and publicly in Iraq is her legacy. You wouldn't sell your soul unless there was some value to it, right? So mm -hmm. her legacy is to reinstate the dinar. She wants that on her watch. She wants to be like, that's what I'm going to be known for. That's my big, you know, hallmark career accolade if you will for lack of a better <laughs> term. Mark moment. so yeah does that mean does that mean yeah does that mean we're waiting till may not necessarily but what it tells you is we're coming in a place where these markers are happening what we need is for Pri prime minister sudani to come out and say this and he will and also this week we broke that erdogan turkey's president is making he's coming back in the news again that he's coming back to iraq to sign the oil and gas law. So what we see happening as of now is as the picture is coming to fruition, we're gonna see more pockets of war, more false flags, more of this stuff, the US trying to incite Iran. And Iran is more important than people think in just the Red Sea and the Strait of Hormuz. They're important in Iraq because we talked about the Iranian militias and the proxy government that holds court in, in um, sorry, we got the ambulances here. It's, hold on a second. It's probably the psychiatric hospital coming to get you back. <laughs> Just a sad reminder of where I am presently that this too shall pass. Actually, I didn't hear it. It was, it was we didn't. Um, I it. did. I'm still, I'm still hearing yeah, it. Yeah. The, the other oh, thing, let me just, let me just roll through this real quick. But Sorry. Let me just tell roll through people this who Erdogan is. Erdogan is the Turkish, the Turkish uh, prime yeah. minister. So, because people forget these names, you know, they're, they're all blending in. So he's gone back to Iraq and he's doing this deal to, um, to right. get the pipeline moving again. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to overlap you. I think it's an internet signal thing. But... No, 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 no problem, buddy. 
anyways, uh, before I forget, so um, so you have these pieces coming together. So you have Iran, who's prevalent in the proxy government in Iraq, right? Just like we have here in the U.S., shadow government, copy countries copy each other. You have the Iranian military militias, right? So, you know, when people say, well, you know, when, or, or you have these people in communities saying, oh, it's today, 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 it's tomorrow, 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 and it's this rate and this rate. To me, that's the boy who cried wolf. How many times do you have to hear that before you use common sense to say, eh, maybe it's probably not that. You know, we got to get off this hopium train and get onto factium, right? So, um, so you're looking at this. So you have to ask yourself, David, three critical questions. Number one, how is Iraq going to RI when they're still on a program rate? That's a corrupt rate that's been going on for 14 years. We've talked about in the past. That's yeah. just a reprise of the discussion. Secondly, how's Iraq going to RI when they have the Iranian proxies and militia? And the third thing is the deep state U.S. government and military has to detentacle, right? So one of the things that we're talking about that we see is when things seem at their worst, God will set his people free. Now, the U.S. government is not going to be happy about this reinstatement. They're going to be upset. So they're going to try to retaliate. So just everybody not panic and just listen to the whole thing before you react. They're going to put sanctions back on Iraq like they have on Iran, with the, the, what is known as the Rial or the Toman currency. So for we see for one to three weeks, most banks will put a stronghold on doing the exchange. But the big banks, we think, like, <clears throat> hint, hint, Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, will probably still honor it during that time. However, when those sanctions come, and Sudani mentions that they're off, <clears throat> this will all in tentacle. So people just need to relax, not rush, be patient. You've been patient to some degree to this point. More will be required to get through this. This is a very big quagmire on purpose. It's, it's the fleecing of good to evil. And when you have that transition, there is a process of cleanup that needs to happen. So that's one of the updates we have. Yeah, well, I've got a couple of new pieces. Well, I've got one. I wanted to, I want, still want to share that video you were talking about, the Federal Reserve, um, sure. which is here, I believe. This is it. Let's have a look. Please. Go ahead. Let me see if I've got the right video, John, because you sent this to me. Is this the right one? Uh... Let's see if it's the right one. The Houthi tab. No, this is something different. Actually, this is great, John, because this is a piece of intel that I just got hold of today, and it involves um, a U.S. Navy vessel. Have a look at this, because the the kid explains it very well. What the connotations can mean, because again, this affects what we're talking about about forcing the hand and getting this done quicker than uh, sooner than rather than later have a look the houthis have just what's happening now the houthis have just destroyed a u.s warship and if you don't believe me here's the footage the american destroyer u.s is gravely in the red sea the spokesman for the yemeni armed forces yahya saria announced the successful targeting of the u.s commercial ship koi which was heading to the occupied ports of palestine now the ship they hit was called the uss gravely and it cost 2.2 billion dollars to build now the ship's defense systems worked perfectly fine a u.s official confirmed yesterday that the phalanx ciws was used in trying to shoot down this missile. And if you don't know, the Phalanx CIWS is one of the last layers of defense on a US warship. It's basically just a big machine gun that shoots bullets at missiles really quickly. Now it's unknown the damage that has been caused to the ship so far, and the US hasn't even put out a statement about this. The footage has just been released by the Houthis. Now the US has two options. They either don't talk about it and just ignore everything and things will go on just fine, or they do talk about it and there's a chance that Congress will impeach Joe Biden because it's an illegal war that hasn't gone through Congress. So if this does come out to the public in the US, this could cause some big political problems. It will either result in the US totally withdrawing from the Red Sea or going full on World War Three against the Houthis. That's great. That's really good. They're not going to go full on World War Three against a third world country. Um, but no. what's surprising about that is, is um, why did that even happen? Again, who do you think is in control of these things? You know, that, that ship should never have had um, a successful attack upon it. And again, Biden administration is going to cover it up. And that's all right in the zone where all of this 
needs to be forced into a hand because we've got right next door to that, we've got Iran. Then there is Israel's across the water. We've got Iraq right in the center of all this as well. And if something does kick off, they're all going to get involved in it. But at the end of the day, I don't believe that these people are going to back the Biden administration with any decisions. Um, I mean, Tucker Carlson is currently out in, um, in Russia now. And that's another bombshell that's about to be released and launched upon the, the U.S. public because there's been no independent journalists that have gone to Russia from any of the mainstream media to discuss things with him. But look at what they've been doing with Zelensky. You've got all these movie stars like... Um, how many have been out there? What's the... Um, I just had him there. Sean Penn, for example, went out there and was shaking hands with him. And then there's been several other actors all flying out to meet Zelensky, where they keep showing Zelensky this, Zelensky that, what's Zelensky doing? And, and nobody's given Putin a chance to discuss it and, and talk about his side of things. But things are coming to a head, John. We're getting there because um, where's that? I'm going to bring up your video now, which I thought was really spot on because basically the Basel three compliancy rules about the banking are really making the U.S. scammers uncomfortable because that's all they are when they've been telling people for years you know invest in this and invest in that if you give somebody like jp morgan one dollar they're going to amplify it and leverage it by 10 and if their investments don't pay off because they've been investing in um companies such as um infrastructure replacement companies in, in these war-torn afghanistan iraq libya syria and they want to um, put the, in, the infrastructure back in. If this is all going to stop, because there hasn't been any wars, that's the thing. There was no war when Trump was there. He didn't invade or bomb anything. So all of these companies that are trying to get their infrastructure back into place have not been able to do it. Anyway, here we go. John sent this to me. So this is not mine. And I was like, whoa, have a listen to this, folks. Dollars. What? But that's impossible. It's never that high. Oh, it's about to get worse. The Fed's considering Basel three endgame, resulting in higher costs for consumers. It'll raise mortgage rates, travel costs, heating bills, and the price of these groceries. Oh, no, 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 no. Those will be. Yeah, I got it. Life is tough enough already. Don't let the Fed make it even tougher. All fifty dollars. What? But that's impossible. It's never that high. Oh, it's about to get worse. The Fed's considering Basel three endgame. Sorry, guys, I replayed it. But basically, that's it's trying to tell the American public to not back the Basel three system, where the um, each country has to lodge either silver, gold, platinum, whatever precious metals or commodities you have to back up the currency they've got, because Federal Reserve is not a government company. If you look up government government agencies in the yellow pages. The Federal Reserve is not in there. It's a privately owned company that basically print the U.S. dollars, and give it to the government, and they do what they need to. And they just keep running up more and more and more and more debt. Well, I, I, you're absolutely right. And I've got a few things to add to that as well, David, which is, Good. <laughs> well, just to, in timely relevance to what you just shared. So the government the shadow government in our in here in america and and throughout the entirety of the world i'm sure they all copy each other they all use something called predictive programming where they yep. have to tell us in code in <clears> entertainment <throat> like the commercials like like music like sports we'll get to that in a moment because i dropped something really good on on our telegram about that as well they have to tell us what they're going to do in plain sight but they do it under the guise of a commercial or entertainment so it's like it sneaks past people because they're so brainwashed and mind controlled that they don't catch it unless they're awake and looking for it, like, like what we're doing. So they're telling you, uh, don't do it means do it. Just do the opposite of whatever they're telling you, right? Number one, very common sense. Two, we got the, I call it the stupor bowl <laughs> coming Stup up this weekend. And what a coincidence, because there are none, it's in yeah. Vegas. Well, it's in Vegas, the gambling capital of the world. If people think sports isn't fixed, how does Vegas exist? How do they know what the score and the spread's going to be? I mean, it's common sense when you really wake up and get it. This all sports, like economies and everything else, it's all fixed. It's all scripted. It's a script. We're living in a movie, right? So um, 
something to watch there because they do cabal codes as well. Did you know that the it's this year it's the, the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers playing? I think this is the fourth out of six year that the Niners are knocking at the door. Six, a cabal number. Hmm. Three, six, uh, 13, 23, and 33 are known cabal numbers in this code movement because we've worked on decoding this stuff. And anyway, okay. it's a long protracted. So anyway, um, so the Niners are in it. And most people are going to see Taylor not so swift and her swifty followers and all that. And a lot of people are going for that, but it just happens to be in Vegas. And this is something we need to watch only in the sense that if the Niners win, they're coded for death and destruction because they're the only football team to wear all black at a funeral that they went to at a game in Philadelphia, I think a few years back. And I put that video on our Telegram so people last night they can go and watch the codes and things that currency 365 John Nego decoded it very nicely and I wanted people to see that. So if they win it's coded for death and destruction. We're going to see a lot more false flags a lot more, you know, fake wars like you said in the Middle East that are designed to take people's eyes off of Iraq while Iraq puts together its parliament its laws its reforms its HCL the gas law and all that stuff, you know, while we're looking elsewhere. And then we're watching for Israel to make, make their big mistake. Like you said, Israel gets involved in the mix with the secret nuclear attacks on the power plants, uh, secret nuclear power plants of Iran. You know, so you got these moves and counter moves going, which set up um, what we're waiting for in the reinstatement and this, this, this kickoff blessing. And then you still have China, Taiwan in the mix as well. So they've got these things one after the other. But if, if the Niners win, that's um, a big code for that. And also... You know, you and I have talked about this offline. I very much, for a multitude of reasons, have a hankering to get out of California and get to Tennessee. And we, we know all the plethora of reasons there. Um, but it was coded that um, there's going to be a pretty significant earthquake at some point in uh, San Francisco. Uh, they're talking about a 9.0. It's way overdue. Absolutely. It, it's way overdue. And we, in January, there was a couple of earthquakes here and throughout Indonesia and parts of the world. So, you know, Kim Clement talked about the earth will shake and shake again, and we're seeing it play out. So th those are, you know, there's, there's a lot happening right now. We just here in California, we've had almost four or five straight days of rain. Thankfully where I live by the beach, it just it washes out. But in parts of Santa Monica, Malibu, Beverly Hills, the Hollywood Hills, they've been dealing with mudslides and stuff like that. So. Well, that's yeah, it. That's it. That's it's terrible to hear that a lot of the Hollywood elites mansions in Malibu have been affected by mudslides, John. I would hate to think that they're being put out of, um, you know, poor, poor people that have been involved in the Hollywood elite about their uh, multi-million dollar mansions um, had a lot of slurry mud swing through it. That would be a shame, wouldn't that? Be terrible that for them. Um, John, yeah. I, um, um, one of the things I'm going to do when I'm in Vietnam is I'm going to buy a load of dong, and we've talked about that often. I would. So, <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I brought some cash with me and I've been trying to use my card as much as I can until I get over there. So I'm going to get some, probably some Cambodian money. All of these countries I can see, they're all, because what they tell us, you get out there, it's hot, sweaty, you can't get medical treatment. There's, you know, no no infrastructure and um, the, the terrible public transport. You know, everywhere I've been so far, everyone's really happy, friendly, and the quality of life is I think it's really high. Your dollar goes a hell of a long way out here. Um, mm -hmm. Well, you can have a meal for about two dollars fifty, dollar twenty five. You get a pad thai with chicken, and you know it's very good quality. Um, so I'm going to be buying some dong while I'm here, um, because I think it's a very good investment. Because what what else are you going to do? When I see things like you can't trust the banks, we know that J.P. Morgan have extended their request to comply with Basel. Uh, new codes they're not going to be able to do right. it and the problem is like i i i suffer um banking bullying because i won't comply what they'll do is to say uh why are you making that transfer i'm saying why do you want to know well we have to ask you it's our rules i say well i ain't going to tell you it's none of your business that came in mm -hmm. from this account which is mine and i'm now chosen to send it to this person so I'm not going to tell you anything why I'm doing it. And they say, well, it's because of our compliance. Well, we're not going to. I said, fine, close it down. You're not the last Coca-Cola on the beach on a hot day, pal. 
and I refuse to give them. I refuse <laughs> to comply with these rules. I do. And I go through, I mean, I've been through mostly every internet bank. I mean, I'm hitting different countries now. And now I've had to say to them, listen, this is the way I am. When you want to ask me questions, ask me now, because I'm not going to be emailing you and scanning things and doing this and that and, and begging you to clear things. No, I'm a customer. I'm paying you to do a job. I don't want any of your 17 or 18 year old recently qualified students emailing me at three in the morning, asking me why I'm sending money for um, whatever I'm doing. And that's it. So um, I can see, because what's happened is countries like the USA and the UK, Germany, all these large countries are now making the banks tax inspectors and money laundering inspectors. Well, it's none of their business what I'm doing with my money. Okay, if you're earning money in legitimately selling drugs or trafficking, I get it. But I'm not. And I told them, you, you opened up my, my account based on these facts. Don't ask me anything else. Just do what I want to do. All I expect is, you know, if I've got a problem, you answer it. Because you're getting paid for it. So, yeah, I don't trust banks. So what I did was took out some cash. I'm going to get some cash while I'm in Southeast Asia. And I'm going to not even bat an eyelid about getting it back. Oh, I'm not transporting hundreds of thousands. Don't worry. But, you know, a couple of thousand here, a couple of thousand there, the local currency which doesn't necessarily cost much um, is a good investment. I think, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I actually don't know how much things are, but I keep having to look it up. I think 100 baht is about $3. I think, <laughs> I don't know, but for a hundred baht, you know, you can you get something. Really, yeah. And you're getting it. Look it up now what we're talking about, better, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. We're getting gonna... it directly here. Well, a couple things, if you don't, if you don't mind. Firstly, um, I'll tell you why the banks are putting up a stink, because they know what Basel three and four represents. It's transparency of how much gold and silver they're physically, physically holding as assets. If they can't back it up, they're going to pack it up. <laughs> so you're going to see, you're seeing all these branches. We put that on our channel as well. I think there was 151 some odd branches this week that closed between. Wells Fargo, Chase, HSBC, City, City Group. You know, um, I, was talking, I was talking with uh, Greg Manorino on Monday and on our show. You might want to check that out as well. But he uh, he's espousing the same thing that we believe, which is that Bank of America is going to be the, the first one to go down. When I asked that yesterday, Bill Holter, his position is it doesn't really it doesn't really matter because he's saying that all the financial institutions are in bed with each other. They're all intertwined throughout the world. I think we can see that. His theory is that it's a three-day domino effect, that once one thing goes, they're all just going to topple very quickly. So the person who's saying, and we'll get back to Dong in a second, the person who's saying, well, I got a 401k, I've got my pensions, I got this, I got that, I'm rich, I don't care. Well, you go to bed on a Friday and you wake up Monday, three days later, and you can't get into the banks, you can't get cash, you can't do any digital transactions. That's the shutdown that everybody in this community knows is incoming, and these are the de definite signs. Now, as far as the dong, I've said this publicly, I'll say it again. It's my number one currency that I hold and my favorite. No, I'm not going to tell you how much I have for people who ridiculously ask that. I mean, how inappropriate is that? That's a personal <laughs> thing. None, none of your business. That's my answer. But <laughs> none of your industries. But, um, but it is my number one currency of choice. And I'm going to do a simple calculation. We're not talking about dates and rates. We're simple math. So today, David, if you bought here in the U.S. anyway, uh, $1,000 US, and I think it'd be what, 1,000 pounds or 1,200 pounds, I'm not sure. Yeah, about 1,200, yeah, yeah. 1,200, you would get, let's just say it's one-to-one, -one, just level playing field, yeah. like President Trump says, just for argument's sake. It's probably going to be more, but let's go with that. If you do one-to-one, -one, you would get a million dinar, right? Yeah. That amount. Yeah. If you buy Dong and you look on the Forex, which everybody I encourage to go to Forex.com, and you can see what the real-time rates are right now. It's roughly 23 and a half thousand dong per US dollar. So you're going to find that out when you go to pick up some here in the near future. <clears throat> and you're, you have the benefit of going direct. It's like getting food from the farm. You're getting it direct from the country. You're not paying any exchange fees, transition rates, no brokers, no middleman. It's direct. That's as good as it gets. So you would get on, depending on where you go, and we have a company that we also work with that you'll talk about later. Um, you yeah. are going to get somewhere between 
roughly 17 to 20 million dong for that thousand US. So if you did it one to one, a million dinar is a million US dollars at one to one. At the dong, Vietnamese dong, it's 17 to 20 million. Way more value for that same investment because you're getting such a, a cheap rate on it. And it's a real currency. You know, that's it. You know, I can't, it's not going to go down. It's not going to go down because, mm -hmm. you know, that's the thing about these are real currencies <laughs> that you can, I can spend there if I want to. I could go back to a bureau de charge at a major airport or even some of the banks and say, okay, you know what? I need the money. I bought it and now I don't want it. So but that's it. You're not buying like stocks and shares, John, to me, just don't make sense. You know what I mean? Oh, it's gone up. Well, where's the evidence? It's just a piece of paper, but you know, you're holding mm -hmm. currency. It's a valid, it's like, it's like real estate. It's bricks and mortar. It's not stocks and shares from some guy in a five or $5,000 suit and a huge gold watch. That's telling me that's worth a lot of money. Now, one of the other things I wanted to go back to, John, is one of the reasons I have problems with these online banks and I won't comply and they keep asking me to leave. I'm like, hey, I'll leave with pleasure. Is um, when you look it up, say I've got, I've got one account, I've got US dollars, euros, uh, sterling pounds, and usually a couple of other bits and pieces like Australian dollars. I do, I buy a few bits and pieces in Australia. Um, when I look at who's holding, so if I'm, if I'm having an in, incoming transmission a transfer of dollars they say oh that's being held by jp morgan although we are a semi-bank we don't keep your money jp morgan keeps your dollars and the euros are kept by the bank of um, central bank of germany so i'm like hold on a second i'm dealing with you and they're not even going into your bank now you're changing you're taking my dollars and they're holding it at a different bank and this is it if people think they're safe in their banks, look at the small print. Who's who's the major bank holding company? Because basically mm -hmm. these guys have just got an agreement with these larger banks saying, like, I want really want to have my own bank, but I know that I have to keep the money with you. But please don't tell people because it's going to make me look really stupid. And that's it. These online banks now, you really have to be careful who is doing it. So what are you going to do with your money? You can't put it in stocks and shares. Yeah, you can buy property. That's great. Property is always a good one. But that's why I like these these currency deals because you know you can yeah. take four five hundred dollars, just put it in a drawer in the living room or in the bedroom or wherever you put it, hey. and just sit on it saying. because we can see the writing on the wall. What's going to happen when you look at all the geopolitical stuff? Iraq is going to be an extremely powerful country. Look at the wealth they've got, the oil and all the natural resources there, and all of the ingredients are all here ready to make this fantastic cake. We just have to get rid of some of the other problems there, which is basically the Biden administration holding back because the cabal do not want you to have money in your pocket so you don't have to put up with their bullshit anymore and say, oh, no, OK, I'll pay you taxes. For example, here's another one. The story broke in the UK, John. It's, there's a massive problem in England with council tax. This is your, your, your rates on your property. OK, so, for example, if you have a house in New York and your local authority is bankrupt and most of the time they are yet they're still sending you bills to pay your local taxes to the local authorities but this is totally illegal if they file for bankruptcy and they're broke a bankrupt company cannot demand you pay them it's totally illegal but of course they're turning a blind eye to this it's the same with a lot of these large corporations such as let's say the irs they're bankrupt. They don't have it. These hedge funds, these hedge fund managers. All right, you're a hedge fund manager. You got 25 billion. Where is it? Where is it? I want to see it. Well, it's obviously not with us. Well, who's got it then? Oh, well, you know, JP Morgan have got it. Oh, JP Morgan. Okay. So you've given them 25 billion and they've leveraged it for 100 billion and have been investing it in what? More Wall Street? Maybe sending some to Zelensky? And you think that's a safe bet? So you're right. You've got a 401k and stuff like this. You really need to rethink things. Luckily, I don't have one. I doubt you have as well. You're unemployable, John. Nobody would hire you. <laughs> I know too much. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I'm not a I'm not a company. I'm not a company man unless it's my own company. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
But I, I want to address a couple of things, David, on the backs of what you just shared that's really complimentary. So this is a question I get all the time that dovetails what you said. So we've covered we've covered Iraq. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we they have a they have a financial problem. Vietnam does not have a financial problem, they have a corruption problem, just like, yeah, yeah. Vietnam, like the rest of the world or here in the US. So it's like people, oh my god, Vietnam. Like it's not any different. They're better off than we are. All the manufacturing, 60, 70 percent comes out of there from from formerly China which by the way, China yeah. is in trouble. They and Russia need this to happen. I'm Just give me a second. I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent to rattle off some stuff. China, uh, IMF thing. just announced, China just, uh, excuse me, IMF just announced this week that Russia is positioned to be the number one currency again this year, like they were in 2022, because of the vast amount of wealth and gold reserves they have. That's a fake news we'll never tell you. What a shock. China lost ne nearly 30% on their CSI thousand index. That would be their, basically their Dow over there. So they're hurting. So Russia and China need this reinstatement to happen. So one way or another, it's going to happen. And we need Russia and China. When I say we, the patriots, need Russia and China for this uh, facilitation to happen because they need it. And when they need it, we're going to get it. And one way or another, pressure is going to be brought to bear, right? So one of the questions I always get is, well, what do we do when we get this exchange? What do we do? How do we move? Well, first of all, you take a deep breath. Focus and stay calm. Don't be reactionary. Think critically. I've always talked about that. So we just talked earlier a few minutes ago. People, if you want to know this, write it down. Don't keep sending us the same repetitive questions. If you care enough, write it down. You need to put skin in the game in your own future. We're not going to go to the bank and do it for you. So if we're not doing that, write it down, record it. You can watch this video as much as you like. So you don't have to keep asking. You will know you need to move yourself up to the next level. We're not going to spoon feed you here. So sorry, not sorry. Um, we've had to pay yeah. our dues. You need to do the same. So I'm only going to say this one time. So what do people do? Well, Greg Manorino, if you watch that video, just told you from his people in the high ups in the banks, they're anticipating that Powell is going to do the first of three rate cuts somewhere between April and June. Well, that tells me, as we talked about what's going on with Iraq, with their new fiscal year in, in, June, in the UN and her turn more early in the second quarter, we will see the reinstatement for Iraq. So when you do get your chance after the banks, if they do block it and they clear it during this time, roughly, don't hold me to it, uh, during this time, because I'm not a financial advisor, this is not constitutes financial advice, I'm just giving you knowledge, when this time happens, when you go to exchange, the first thing you should do, and what I'm doing is get that dollar while it has perceived value during the rate cuts. Because as he starts to do those rate cuts, that's when they start doing QE, quantitative easing, more printing of money, more printing, printing, printing. You know, David, when you put a document in a copier, the more prints you do, the less the image quality that each subsequent generation goes <laughs> down. Why would that, yeah. Yeah. that be any different for the... For the financial situation, that's basically they're just running a printing press, and every time that you lower interest rates, you, that bubble is just goes down and gets ready to implode, which we we know they can't do much longer. So while the dollar has perceived value, get into physical assets, things you were probably going to do anyway: land, precious metals, uh, uh, re up for other currencies that are coming, like the Thai bot, like you talked about. We believe that's in the next one after the dong and the dinar and the rupee and the zim, which we'll touch on in a moment. I'm getting to that. So, you know, physical assets, uh, weapons, you know, ammunition has brass and silver in it. You can trade that. Back in the old days, you had a shot glass. Why they call it a shot glass? You could go to a bar, give them a, a, a one round of ammunition for a shot. That's where it came from. And okay. that's bartering. I'm talk talked about that. Barter. Barter with your neighbors. If you have neighbors or if you barter, a lot of businesses will be doing that. Don't wait until the economy gets bad enough. Start being proactive, not reactive. Heirloom seeds, grow and can your own food, have a water source, become self-sufficient, become your own central bank. These are the words. You leapfrog from piece to piece to piece. So as the dinar comes in, you move. The you buy more dong if you don't have any start buying it with the money you get from the dinar and move from piece to piece to get as we transition because i know we're pressed for time zimbabwe right 
So people always ask, well, what's the difference between a currency and a bond? It's actually pretty simple. They just try to make it vague and convoluted because that's how they make money, meaning the deep state and the, the banker yeah. powers that be. <clears throat> a bond is a debt instrument that the country owns that the citizens or the residents in that respective country buy. So for example, Zimbabwe residents, they can't get too much of it right now, but we can because it's been taken out of circulation. People think it won't go because it's been taken out of circulation. You can make the same argument for the dinar, a lot of these other countries that have been hamstrung or stronghold to this point. It just means they're going to get released. But a bond is a debt instrument between the country and the, the, the citizens that live there that buy it direct. Okay, currency is also a debt instrument. Your U.S. we're handing out dollars. It's their IOUs basically because there's there's no military backing and there's no assets backing it currently. So that's their proof that people want to know. With that currency, the difference is it's between the country and the banking institutions. So it's a middleman third party. The two terms are interchangeable and there's very little difference. So that's in simplest terms what they are. But we're we're seeing this thing swell up now with Zimbabwe. I put in some news in my telegram a couple of days ago, a corrupt guy understood he's a placeholder for Chimisa to come back. Uh, Zimbabwe's elections, as I can see it, are August 23rd of this year. Doesn't mean we have to wait till then. It could pre be preempted like here in the US. Cyril Rempinosa is talking about South African industry has undergone significant mining changes. Mining for what? Gold, rhodium, diamonds, uh, silver and many, many other assets, platinum, palladium that they have rich in their ground, crops, et cetera. So he's another cabal code telling you, hey, we're, we're up and coming and, and they have to do that in code because they don't expect most people to listen or understand. So I just wanted to share that with you. Yeah, I, I follow it. Zimbabwe is another one. Um, again, great investment, get some Zims, a, a very specific AAA um, series um what do you call it series uh serial number triple a serial number on those but again we'll put the link below so any of the information that you need to verify if you want to get any of these currencies we got a way for you to get them because obviously it's not easy to get them if you're in kansas or missouri or somewhere you know i don't know in berlin it's not so easy to get them but there's a there's a way there there's a link there below you can do that um I like all of them. I mean, I've got Zims, I've got Bard, I've got Dong. I'm going to get some um, some more Dong now because I like the ones that are valid currencies. The bonds, I like those as well because I understand it. But maybe, you know, people don't understand those because at the end of the day, if you ever want to cash out with it, any investment, it's all about the cashing out period as well. How are you going to, you know how to get into it, but how are you going to get out of it? And a lot of the time, these currencies that we're talking about they are valid currencies you can cash them out anytime you want to mm -hmm. you want to get more you can if you want yeah. to get less and that's the beauty of it it's and there's no and there's no sanctions on vietnam either because no. they're not they're not under that they've already been in the world trade organization since 2004 for 20 years now so one suggestion david if you're getting the dong here pretty soon the vietnamese dong yeah um, my recommendation is get it in mixed denominations lower denoms 100,000 if you can get 50,000, 100, 200,000, don't just get the half a million. And the reason is, I always tell people when they do go to exchange, take one note, the smallest one you got, and start a relationship with that banker. Don't leverage, don't play your hand too much. Let them, you're holding the cards. Because also, there's another important thing to mention, David, is people forget this, or maybe they don't know it, so now they will. You've got heat on you in a good way from the banks and these here in America, treasury-backed currency dealers, right? Because the banks pretty yeah. much some will sell it to you direct, but it, it's getting less and less and less. Um, and so there's there's reasons for that because they were told to go through the treasury and have these middlemen. So the banks are not directly involved. It's less heat on them. People coming in every day from these people saying today, today, today. I mean, that, that's what shut the banks down years ago. Oh, where's my where's my revaluation? Why doesn't it happen? Why? And people, the banks are like, what are you talking about? They didn't even bother. Yeah. These people didn't even bother to look on Forex to see that the rate hadn't changed. All you yeah. have to do is go on Forex and it'll, it'll show. But the point being is you're going to have the banks wanting to buy it and you're going to have the treasury backed or our exchange dealer that we're giving you to buy it from you. So yeah. you're going to have technically a bidding war. So you don't have to drop your pants and just take what they give you. You need to leverage this and hold the cards and be strategic about it. Yeah, That's absolutely. Really right. You're holding the cards. Well, John, 
I think we better call it a night because we could go on for hours and hours together, but we better yeah. let these people absorb this. It's um, it's going to be an interesting next few months because, you know, what, as things change and progress, we get a little bit closer as they move the chess pieces around the board. We can see the moves are coming and it's getting closer and closer to it. Inevitably, what we know is going to happen. I like the currencies because it's solid it's tangible you can hold on to them you can put them in your safe you can put them under the mattress they're from countries that are busy that are developing they're not sitting around and don't listen to what the people on the mainstream media will tell you about these countries it's going to be i'll do another report from what i'm going to find out about cambodia and also vietnam in the next 10 days i'm going to be in both these countries so next time we do a chat in a couple of weeks two three weeks I'll have more information, yeah. but if anybody needs any of these um, currents we talked about, and this is it. You can buy $50, $100, $200, whatever you want. They're there, and that's it. That's that's the beauty of it. The link's below. Contact them. That's who we've used in the past. I mean, I'm in a new, unique situation being here, but I bought from them, and I, I didn't bring my other currencies with me because I knew it was coming here. There's no point. And we'll be back in a few weeks to give you a little update. Anything you'd like to add before we say goodnight? You go ahead up and have some breakfast. I'm going to hit the hay. I'm not shattered. <laughs> no, I got up. I got up early for you, so I've already done that. But I oh, say, don't try to make me feel guilty. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 uh, I tip my cap to you for for being up so late and doing this for the people. No, just the other quick thing is um, two things. One, also another great currency that I hold is the Indonesian rupiah. They're another one in Southeast Asia to watch. Yeah, we believe they're yeah. going to go in this next wave because they have also a ton of resources. They, along with Vietnam, I think we touched on this last time, but for those who didn't hear it, they Vietnam and Indonesia roughly comprise of 60% of the world's cinnamon supply. I know you don't like it, but yeah. a lot of people do. It's a very valuable commodity, right? In Iran, in Iraq, number one um, creation of phosphorus in the world. So we use phosphorus in virtually everything in everyday life. So it's, you're you're investing in your family, the whole of these countries' well-being, your well-being, your future legacies. You're being given a unique opportunity in this wealth transfer to do work for God's people, for the kingdom, and and your fellow man and woman, your neighbor, that kind of thing. Just do the best yeah. you can. And and to the people who don't have any disposable income, don't assume that it's always going to be that way. Uh, we still have Nasara and Jasara in the in the wings. And, and there's been a lot of people who do come into this wealth who are going to help you, who are going to help the poor, the hungry, the lonely, the needy, the widows, the orphans, and are going to be tasked with that. There's a lot of people who want to do that kind of work. So don't try not to think so uh, fatalistic that that your lot in life is the way it's going to remain. If we're changing this, this whole dynamic, your life can't stay the same either in a positive way. Cash is king, mate. Cash is king. When all the power goes out and you can't, you know, charge your, your your debit card or your credit card, this is what you need to be holding. John Dowling, great to see you again, my friend. We'll speak very soon. Keep me posted on the updates from your intel. I watch them every day. And for the sake of the audience, thank you very much, guys. I hope this has brought you some more understanding of um, this confusing world out there and what's going on. And maybe you'll take a little bit of advice from two um idiots from different parts of the world they seem to know what they're talking about <laughs> thanks john we speak soon bye bye everybody all right mate bye bye, bye, -bye.